Hi everybody, it's Andrea. I am here now with a late reading wrap up for the month of November. No book haul this month because I only bought like four books so I didn't see the point. I'll do a combined haul at the end of December because I am hopefully getting some books. Well I've had a few this month but not many. So let me just get my reading journal, look how thick it is. And we'll have a look at what we read in November. So the first book I read in November is this book. This is called Weird, His uh, Weird Bristol, The Ultimate Guide to a City's Secrets. And it's by Charlie Ravel Smith. And literally does what it says on the tin. So basically says, do you know that a hoard of 16th century gold is probably buried somewhere in Bristol? Or that a statue in the city actually depicts the moment a king died? And it's all about little bits about the history of Bristol, like Brunel's other bridge. So there's another bridge in Bristol that was built by Brunel, not just a suspension bridge. Um, all sorts of bits, uh, the Red Cliff Caves, the Tragic Boy Poet, uh, the High Cross, all sorts of bits of history if you're interested in Bristol. There's another sequel to this, I haven't read it yet. But yeah, and they also have um, an Instagram. So if you're interested, you can just go onto Instagram and search Weird Bristol and you'll find this guy. I loved this book. I actually gave it five stars. It was so interesting and I can't wait to read volume two. Then, oh, this is one I bought last month, so I've got to find it. I read this very thin little volume, which is called Rudolph Valentino's Strange Afterlife. So, obviously, Rudolph Valentino, he died in 1926, the age of 31, of peritonitis. And his death triggered an outpouring of grief like the world had never seen. Um, you know, akin to what happened with Princess Diana. And... Uh, our women killed themselves because he died and this is a story of what happened afterwards um there's articles from magazines i think jennifer spilt water on it by the look of it that's all right though um the auction of his estate his house ghosts but yeah so there's magazines yeah this has gotten damp because jennifer spilt water on it so i have to dry it out before i put it away but you know i mean it's, there are better books about Rand valentino but it was an interesting little read uh tracy trehearn's got a very good one about the people who visited his grave i want to read that again next year it was really good i gave it three stars because there could have been more to it i would have liked there have been two more to it uh, for our classic of the month i read the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde i really enjoyed this i gave it four stars um, it is a classic, a man who wishes that the painting will grow old while he remains young and that's exactly what happens. Um, the picture changes and ages with every choice Dorian makes and he descends into madness. I really enjoyed this book. I've actually, as you can see, put a tab in because there is a very lovely quote in there <clears throat> that I will read to you. I think it's just so beautiful. Uh, let me just get it. Um, and it's behind every exquisite thing that existed, there was something tragic. Um, so obviously it could be said about Marilyn as well, so that's why I think I liked it. But I have another one of these beautiful cloth band classics to add to my collection. Stephen King of the Month. Oh, it took me a while to get through it, but it was it. We all know this story. A story of uh, a group of children who are called back to their hometown after many years before defeating a supernatural entity known as It. His most popular appearance is of Pennywise the Clown, played originally by Tim Curry in the original movie. It's the only one I've seen. I'm not interested in the remake. I love Tim Curry. Um, and what happens when they come back? And it sort of tells the story of what happened along what is happening. And can they, this time, destroy the clown forever can they destroy it whatever it is forever uh, it took me a good week to read this because it is over a thousand pages it's 1166 pages to be exact long but again it's a four star read for me because i love i loved it it was very very good so a good month a very good month now next was uh where is it alex kiva damaged this, these, this is one that's been on the, the shelf for a very long time um, about a woman named Maggie O'Dell who is a FBI profiler um, and a cool box of human body parts shows up in Florida. Um, even she's appalled. However, there is a hurricane on its way. Can they solve the mystery as to what's going on and survive the hurricane? Um, again, four stars. I really enjoyed this book. It's a really, really interesting and good read. 
Uh, Lee Child, worth dying for. Jack Reacher. Of course it's Jack Reacher. He walks right into trouble in the middle of nowhere. A family named the Duncans who run the area with their uh, team of um, truckers, trucks, trucking in and out supplies. However, he can't let go of the fact that there's a decades old unsolved disappearance of a young girl. Um, were the Duncans involved in it? Have they been involved in anything else? I gave this one five stars. It was absolutely brilliant. I do love Lee Child anyway, but this one was absolutely amazing. What I've had um, from my mum for a while is The Captive of Kensington Palace by Jean Palady. Um, it's the second book in the Victorian saga, but I've, I've only read this one. And it's about, <coughs> it's about Princess Victoria before she became queen and her, her growing up with um, her mother, who was very domineering and very controlling, her, um, her mother's friend, uh, Sir John Cor Conroy, who's trying to also get power from, because they know she's likely to become queen, though it's not 100%. Duke of Cumberland, who thinks he wants to be, he should be king or his family should be king and all the time showing how lonely her life must have been her you know when her sister went off to, to marry somebody else and her uncle went off to become king of somewhere else and so on and just how lonely she must have been but I did give it three stars it was good I mean I think maybe because of the whole Victoria with Jenna Coleman as well as is is helping with this sort of thing James Patterson Private this is about Jack Morgan who runs Private which is the world's most exclusive detective agency um, a friend of his is murdered a friend of his wife is murdered it's somebody he used to actually go out with um, and he's uh, trying to track down a killer then there's um, some thing around a, a, a arranging football or baseball games I'm not sure which it is now it's been that while, a while um, and they're investigating that and he, he's gonna find out what happens yeah enjoyable it's a four star it's a four star I mean James Patterson's not my favorite but I did enjoy that next one's called Forgotten in Memory by Chloe Crant Jones this is by the Book Guild they actually sent me this when it first came out for review and I never got around to it because you know things happened and it's a story of three children um, whose ch whose parents die in a car crash and they are in the car with them when this happens but the children survive and it's how the three of them cope with it and deal with it in their own way so Imogen deals with it one way Joanna the eldest a different way and Jason's is completely different again and it's how they grow up now I think Imogen was adopted the other two are natural so she sort of feels a bit left out and that was really moving um it is absolutely a really good story it's not very long as you can see it's only 100 200 pages um but I did give it four stars because it was that good of a book I did one reread and uh, there was a reason behind that which I'll get into and that's the the, the last sitting by Bert Stern this is a photo session or several photo sessions that Marilyn Monroe did with the photographer Bert Stern for Vogue shortly before her death in 1962 um, the famous ones of her are the ones with the scars which I won't show because a lot of the time you see her breasts through them um, but there also was a fashion shoot and then there was a, a, a headshot he wanted to get of her um, which he wanted to do the iconic Marilyn. I don't personally think it's the iconic Marilyn, but that's my my opinion. Um, the reason I reread this is because I'm I'm planning a TikTok on the Bert Stone because this whole thing about her wearing a black wig, which a few years ago Bert Stone actually claimed was her taking the Mickey out of Jackie Kennedy. Now in this book, he's put the fashion sequence in order. Now in recent years, he's claimed that it was not. Um, the last, he's been claiming it was the last image, the last um, item of the fashion series, but it, it wasn't. Um, so, let's see if I can find, it was actually about halfway through, I can't actually find it now. There's only one or two, anyway, uh, I'm going to do a TikTok on it because they've claimed this, but it's not true. It was part of a fashion series. They put it on it, and in this book, he actually said that she reminded him of Snow White. And that's a full star, just because the photos are stunning. Uh, Cynthia Harold Eagles, The Oak Apple. This is book four, yeah, I believe. Four, yeah, four, in the Moreland Dynasty. So this is through the reign of Charles I. 
so of course we've got the round heads and the cavaliers lots of civil war going on um moreland is a catholic family they've managed to get through henry the eighth and elizabeth the first reign now they're being attacked of their religion on the puritan side and edward is just the only thing he's interested in is keeping his land he is not taking sides in this matter he will help whoever can help him so at one point he helps the round heads and when the cavaliers want help he'll help them too he is not biased um however his wife is staunchly catholic staunch, staunchly royalist uh, uh, and so on however his son goes off and marries a puritan <laughs> so uh, it's a really good book um sadly his wife is very ill at the end when he reconciles with her after falling out because of this whole thing um but i'm sure that's in book five but uh, yeah that was a good four star read i'm really enjoying this i'm not big on historical stuff like this but this is a good series peter may the might and might blah, 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 the night gate this is book seven Oh, excuse me for the Enzo McLeod series um yes the body of a man is found disinterred by the roots of a fallen tree during a storm hits from World War II but a week later after this find a famous art cricket critic is murdered in a nearby house now the story takes place on two timelines the present day or 2020 is around Covid lockdowns and also in the time of the World War II and the one thing that these two deaths have in common is one singular painting, the Mona Lisa. So I gave that four stars because I love a bit of Peter May and this was a really good book. Then we had Harlan Coburn, Stay Close. Again I do like a good Harlan Coburn book. So basically it's discovered that every Mardi Gras a man disappears um, um, without trace <clears throat> and for Cassie this was enough uh, for her to run away and start a new life she was working as a dancer in a strip club and she was going out with a guy who was one of her customers and he was abusive he disappears and she she too disappears and changes her her name back to her original name with a slight spelling change and becomes a suburban mom and this is a story what happens like, so something like 10 years later or something like that when she is she drifts back to that atlanta where it took i think it's atlanta it takes place and things start happening they the police then put together that these are going missing on mardi gras simply it's they the reason they discover it is because it happened on the same day of the first guy going missing well it's yeah it's actually the second guy but her fella going missing um and then they think well there's other guys who've gone missing around the same time but not on the same day and then they realise that these guys have gone missing on Mardi Gras. So yes. Oh hello! Did Daddy let you back in? It's the cat. So that one was a good four stars. Um, and the last book I read, um, I only gave two stars and this is called A Life Lived. Again this was sent to me for review by Liz Parker. She used to be an actress under the name of Elizabeth Howe. It's quite sad. Um, she married uh, quite a famous actor um, and when they divorced and she had I think it was three children, a boy and two girls or at least two girls, definitely two girls. I'm not sure about a boy. And she moves um, to Greece and opens a taverna over there and then her daughter takes it over. Um, tragically her daughter dies on this island of um, an aneurysm or something like that and it's how she copes with it and, and what happens. Um, it was alright, it was interesting but there's a lot of name dropping. Lots of, oh Sean Connery this and Anthony Hopkins that or Oliver Reed this or so and so that. And while she, she knew them, it's clear she did, it just seems it didn't need to have that amount of name dropping but there you go. So those are all the books I read in November. It was not a bad bad month. I am five away from completing my Goodreads Challenge of 200 for this year. I will exceed that. Um, so I'm really, really doing well there. I hope you've enjoyed this quick reading wrap up. It's very quick for me. It's only 15 minutes, if that. I've got to go and get Jennifer and I will see you very soon with a colouring video. Bye guys.